Well, I'll start this, Charles. Uh, thank you so much again for, for joining. I know you, you're very hectic at the moment, so I really do appreciate you popping on. Um, I've got to say congratulations on the Kickstarter. Um, you know, I, I, where were you when it was being launched and, and what was that reaction when, when it basically hit the stretch goal within half an hour? I know. No, no. Where I was was I was actually in Germany um, meeting a, a wonderful group of people at um, at uh, Rocket Beans and Game Two, um, and that finished at about um, two o'clock. And then I rushed to my hotel, um, had a quick call with a wonderful community manager, Wendy. Yes. Um, and. And, and 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 read through the <laughs> read, read through the uh, th through the page, made a few and a few changes, and then launched it. Amazing! Um, and the response was absolutely phenomenal. As I mean, we're just blessed because we have such a wonderful community. Yeah, I mean, Laura, you know perfectly well the people who love adventure games are just really nice people. You hear yeah. terrible stories about other communities. It's completely alien. I mean, we're, we're blessed. We're lucky. And we, we have, in particular, a very passionate um, community for Broken Sword. And it, it, as I keep saying, we're just lucky. Yeah, completely. Well, I mean, and also it is a great game. I think you've got to allow that into the equation as well. <laughs> they, you know, people wouldn't back it unless they love the game. So I think, you know, give yourself some credit as well. Um, Thank you. Um, you Thank know, you. It, it's done so well. And I, I don't know if you can answer this. And it's totally fine if you can't. But I mean, do, do, you, do you know if you, you've got any plans for any stretch goals or anything on this Kickstarter? Or? Oh, we, we, we definitely need to, I mean, we really have li honestly been completely overwhelmed. And yeah. So normally about halfway through the, 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 the campaign, you start thinking about such things. Uh, I mean, the, the answer is, of course, we've got lots of ideas, but I haven't, we're not in, I'm not in a position to talk about them That's yet because, because we haven't finalised them. But, but what a nice position to be in. Yes, completely. It, it, it is. And that's the thing we've got to remember here. This is uh, still there's still 25 days of this thing to go. <laughs> it's there's still plenty of time for people to back and I've got a little link in there in the chat if anyone hasn't yet uh, and wants to check this out I mean uh, I'm interested obviously I'm sure you've had people coming to you uh, wanting something like this a kind of updated version of Broken Sword for, for quite a while uh, at what point did you decide we can actually do this this is we're gonna do it well that's that's a really good question um we have had people asking about you know they said oh just simply port it across to new consoles and what i wanted to do was i wanted to to, to to take the opportunity and the time to really think about how an adventure game from 1996 should appear in 2024 and i was very enthused by a, a lad that came in um for work experience and he plays fifa and all of this sort of and he, he'd never even come across point to click adventures and you know he's he, he was very he's very smart um but people who play adventure games generally are smart otherwise they'd play a different genre um and he wrote such a glowing report he said i, I didn't realize that games like this existed he said it's like discovering video games for the first time again and that was just that was absolutely wonderful and I, I felt for some time, particularly since when I play adventure games, I find it so frustrating that you, you know, the things that we used to love 20 years ago um, now, now don't work in the same way. So we, for Broken Sword Reforged, of course, we have the traditional mode, which is the same as the original, but with you know 4k rather than you know 640 480 um enhanced audio all of those things um and you can of course just go back to the original if you want there's a nice key uh, yes that's one, nice so you can switch yeah yeah you can switch but what, what, I, what i'm kind of obsessed with is what what i think the point of click is a fantastic interface it's a good simple interface from which complexity emerges you know, it, it is it is the reason it's been so popular is because it works really well. But my question is, has the user experience really moved on in the way that it should have done? And my answer is possibly not, possibly not. So we're putting in a story mode, which, as I say, people are welcome to play the traditional mode if they want. But in the story mode, what I, I don't want people to get stuck for too long. 
So, for example, um, a, a feature which I'm very pleased with is that, yes, there are loads of hotspots, but as you click on hotspots that, you know, aren't vital to progress, so we remove them. And what we're effectively doing is we're focusing the player on the solution. And, you know, because I don't want them to have to go and get hints. Of course, you can go and look at hints, but I don't want people to have to look at hints. I want yeah. them to feel smart. And a lot of this came about from something that feels very naive, and I'm slightly embarrassed to admit it. And that was putting the game out to user testers for the mobile version, because we were thinking about, you know, how, how easy is this game to play? And we looked on Google Play and we looked on the, the App Store and, you know, we got very good scores and that was great. And then we used the service um, to, to put it out just to random gamers. And the score came back at 50%. And that was so shocking. And there were a lot of negative comments. And it's easy to say, well, surely everybody knows point and click. Well, it was quite clear that everybody didn't know point mm. and click. And something else that I noticed is that people didn't want to get hints, but once they did go for hints, then they would keep going for hints and they would ruin the experience. So what we've done is we've kind of tailored and iterated on the story mode to try and make it as, to appeal to as broad an audience as possible. Hopefully the original um, adventure players, oh, I think but also be, yeah. to a new audience um, and, and to give people the choice of, of how they want to, to experience the game. Um, we, I have, being completely respectful to the original game. I have changed things where I thought that there were continuity errors. Um, you know, in, in the very first section, for example, you know, Clown runs in and puts a, um, uh, as people who are on this stream will probably know, um, on, on a stool. And, and yet when the game starts, the explosion is in the middle of the room and the stool is standing there as though nothing has happened to it. Um, so I've kind of taken the liberty to say, well, you know, if we're looking at the continuity, that, that stall would have been blown up. Um, likewise, when George runs, you know, walks over to the alleyway and the you know, following the clown, and there's the pipe and he pulls the pipe and the pipe and, and it says, and says, you know, the clown can't escape that way, but clearly he can't because the pipe doesn't even go above the screen. Um, and, and just, just things like that. Also, um, when in, in the hotel scene, Khan comes back and he's wearing the trousers that match the jacket that George has found. And yet he's wearing a purple jacket and then he gets the trousers, purple trousers out. And so subliminally the player will be thinking, hang on, what if he's wearing that then? So it's just a fantastic opportunity to, to come back and make very, very minor adjustments to hopefully make the story make a little bit more sense and therefore for the game to make more sense from a puzzle perspective. That's certainly my, my, my vision for this. I've got to ask, will the goat puzzle be changed in any way? <laughs> <laughs> do you know, do you know, we're, we're not far off now and that is still up in the air. I, I, I think it should. And, and the reason I think it should is it's an unfair puzzle. It's an unfair puzzle because we've changed the the user interface midway through. At no point do we tell the player that that they 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 should click. Mm. I mean, for for those who don't know the, yeah. the goat puzzle, um, if you, you you come across this very gruff goat and you can walk to the left and he butts you over, you can walk to the right and he butts you over. But what the solution? Am I allowed to give a spoiler at this stage? Yes, because we'll I probably think change so. it. Yeah, it's fine. So from, I'll say we'll say spoiler, the, spoiler, but yeah. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> so for the for, for, for the traditional, I, I would imagine we'll leave it as it is, because that's fine. That's what people but for the for the for the story mode, um what we will do is I think simplify it only in the sense that it makes more sense. But I don't think we're changing any other puzzles. Um I think it's just that one because the reason, I mean, basically, Laura, if we go back to the early days, what we did when we were, when, when we were writing the game in the, in the nineties is a lot of adventure players 
you know, the hardcore would say, mm. oh, these games are too easy. Oh, we finished them too quickly. And being naive, we kind of thought they reflected everybody. Mm. But they were probably, you know, the most experienced adventure player, maybe 5%, maybe 10%. And they made all the noise. Yeah. And so the goat puzzle was put in to uh, pacify the, the people that were complaining that games were too easy. <laughs> and, and for those 10%, they were happy. But for the 90% of people who played the game who didn't, follow the grammar quite so extensively it was it i mean basically so this was before the before the internet so it completely stopped people in their tracks and they then had to wait a month until magazines came out yes that yep. covered this didn't and have the, the magazines, internet then thankfully exactly and the magazine thankfully gave 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 the solution and helped people move forward uh, so in t- so the story mode then uh, i know obviously we're saying this is all still being worked up and everything but um it sounds like it's it's kind of the the elements of of the game will still be there, but maybe just some elements simplified. Or how how will that work in making? Oh it no, no, no 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 no. The the, the goat simplified. The goat simplified. But yes. But, but nothing else is going to right, be simplified. Right. Got you. Okay. Um. And and what what I what I do want to do is just very very gently, over time, point the player in the direction of the solution. Is so that through like the hotspots? Through the hotspots. Right. Um, also, after a certain amount of time, just a little nudge. Look at look in this direction. Look in this direction. Right, I got because you. I got you. Ult- ultimately, I want people to just stay f- feeling smart rather yeah. than having to resort to looking at hints. Um, we have a question in the chat from um, WormST17 who says, "How has it been looking at the old art uh, and having them redone by new artists?" Oh well, <laughs> with 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 the backgrounds. Um, in many cases, we went back to the pencil line that was drawn by uh, two layout artists, brilliant layout artists, yes. uh, Owen Cahill um, and Neil Breen, who both worked for um, the Don Booth Studios and so had brought a lifetime of experience. And in, 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 in many cases, we've gone back to the pencil line and redrawn it from scratch, but using the Broken Sword original screens as a background. Okay. Um, now we did we did use a little bit of upscaling, um, but as is always the case, the human yeah. intervention worked a lot better than than using AI. Um, as far as the sprites are concerned, um, again we we redrew an awful lot of them. We did bring some AI to do some of the um, interpolation. Uh, and do some of the dog's body stuff. But again, as is always the case, you know, human intervention, y- 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 human expression requires humans to draw it. Uh, that's not something that I don't think AI is ever going to do particularly convincingly. Um, and w- we were lucky that we had the original music uh, at high, yes. high, high quality. Um, and then we also have in- enhanced the, the voices as well. So it, it is qu- quite a... It, 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 as I keep saying, it is very respectful to the original, yeah. but it is significantly enhanced, both in terms of the vis- visuals and the audio. I mean, it, it's a big project to take on when it's it's so beloved, I, I imagine, and you want to keep those elements in that everyone loves, but you also want to enhance them and, and maybe show them as, as they should be shown. I, I imagine, you know, you've been keeping that in, in your mind as, you, as you're going on. Well... That there are some fairly weak elements. There's uh, in one, one of the videos we put out, we compared when George um, walks down the stairs in Ireland from the dig to one of the clues that, you know, we kind of rushed at the end um, back in 1996. And we can now pause for breath and really improve the look um, and the continuity of George because we have time, to, yeah. because we have time to do it. We're not rushing it. Um, the the other thing that, I mean, I love is that uh, with the cutscene at the very beginning, we have a pan over Paris. And if people look at the Kickstarter video, they'll see that the original art, because it was compressed to go on a single speed CD, um, is pixelated. It's also um, the the... The, the, the sky, because it had so many colours, is really messed up. And it's we put so much effort with some really talented people to get that opening pan, and it got mashed up horribly yeah. by the requirement to 
compress it for single speed CD. So it's just such a pleasure to be able to go back, revisit it, not change it per se, yeah, to yeah, bring yeah. it to the quality that we had when we first saw it and didn't have to mash it up. And I guess, is is that the reason why you're calling this more reforged than, you know, obviously it's not exactly a, a remaster, is it? There's there's other elements in play here. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's kind of reforged because it's a bit of a pun, obviously, on Broken yeah. Sword. Um, but it, it, what I didn't want to convey was that we're adding, and I mean, we are looking for some lines that were recorded at the time. Um, and if it's feasible, we're considering whether to put those back in again, because to me, the canon was from, you know, the canon of the game was 1996, anything that existed. So some of the lines were never called. Uh, and it'll be great to put some of those back in again. And that is quite legitimate because that was the canon of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, we, I guess we're lucky because the, the, the person who wrote the dialogue, Dave Cummins, was pretty progressive um, and revolution was pretty progressive. I mean, God help us. We wrote a game that had a strong female co-protagonist. Yeah. That was a, a very, very rare thing for, for, for 1996. Um, and, you know, broadly, I think the game has pretty robustly stood the test of time in terms of, you know, modern sensibility. And it's, you know, there the, 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 the generally aren't things that we feel or that I feel haven't survived yeah. through the ages. So yeah, pretty much, pretty much all the changes that we've made relate to, you know, to continuity rather than any other reasons. Uh, and a question in from Winring who says in the Kickstarter, it's mentioned that you can switch between new and old visuals as you, you were mentioning in this as well. Uh, what will it be possible to compare uh, only the normal game or also audio and cutscene? <laughs> <laughs> really making you work for it. <laughs> Uh, now I'll tell you, this is very naughty, but what we what we were just talking about this morning, because it's such a popular, is to actually allow you to switch between the the new, the original PC, and the original PlayStation, Ooh. because the original PlayStation was really low resolution. Um, I, I I don't know the answer. Yeah, to that. I, that's fine. I, oh gosh, I don't know the answer. I I don't know how feasible it would be to to be able to switch the old cutscenes as well. Um, the old audio that's a really nice question let, let me let me park no, that one as yeah a, that's fine as, yeah as, as, as a really nice it's worth saying really nice question. this is still in development obviously i don't want to put charles on the spot and obviously as wendy mentions this isn't a promise don't nobody take that what charles just said is it that's <laughs> definitely happening but we all know it's still in development uh, there so yeah but i i get that that would be an interesting get, thing but yeah i get into terrible trouble with wendy if i if i, I, know, I say exactly. <laughs> but wendy's here <laughs> <laughs> to keep you on track um I, I i some people be interested um because they'll know obviously there there is obviously already a director's cut of of uh broken sword and how will this differ from that because it, this is from the original isn't it yeah so what what happened back in the day was that we did a game boy advanced version and that was a hell of a feat of engineering but to to, to be able to do that yeah we re-implemented everything and a part of the re-implementation, because there was so little memory, meant that elements of the game were not included. So people, and, and, and one of the big, uh, uh, one of my big regrets is that when we did Director's Cut, we actually used that version as a base rather than going back to the original. So there is substantial amounts of content that is in the original, but not in Director's Cut which is precisely why we've gone back to the yeah. original rather than director's cut for this reforged version. Uh, and what was it like? You mentioned we've, we've had a bit of a chat about the graphics, but as you, you said, the sound as well is getting a huge boost in, in quality, which must have been quite excited to, exciting to be able to include that. Was that quite challenging or did it, al it already existed in that format and it just wasn't possible to bring that to the original? Right, so, so the music existed in the original and we went back to DAT tapes. Now, DAT tapes, we're talking about 25 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and um, our wonderful uh, head of technology, Yoast, um, you know, basically, we, we had to, 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 to take these DAT tapes with a format that is so ancient. And, and he luckily was able to find um, uh, uh, an audio place 
where we could send these things. And then it was really exciting because some of them didn't work, but mo all, all but one worked. And we were able to get the original um, sound effects back again. We had the original music from Barrington, um, but what we didn't have was the speech. So the speech, we, we've worked really, really hard to find ways to en enhance that um, and, and been very successful. So, I mean, the problem, of course, is that, you know, I was mentioning earlier that the cutscenes had to be compressed for single speed CD, but, but the audio was the same. So, sorry, the speech was the same. So, um, broadly, uh, a CD is 48 kilohertz or 44 kilohertz, 44.2 kilohertz. Um, and we had to compress it to 11 kilohertz. And what right. that ultimately happens is you get a kind of hiss, um, which makes it harder to hear. So by being able to go back up to 44 kilohertz, you can remove that hiss. So ultimately with the better quality music, sound effects and speech, it's a much clearer uh, audio experience. Amazing. Oh, it sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Blue Lou in the, in the chat asks, um, and again, you, you might not know this, but I'm, I'll ask you and see if you know, or, um, would you know, would it be verified for Steam Deck compatible for handheld PCs? Is that something you're looking into? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love my Steam Deck. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do you play on it? What have you... Well, most recently, I played Data Diver. And oh, Trench, yes. Excellent and, game to play on the handheld. Uh, fantastic. Really, yeah. really enjoyed it. Um, a, a game called Chance of Sonar. I don't know if you know. Yes. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The language. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Which got so great. I mean, it's I lie in bed and play on my Steam Deck. It's fantastic. Um, the answer to that is, uh, and I've sort of semi forgotten the question, but, yeah, sorry. but, but the answer, <laughs> but, but I can remember the answer. Yeah. And the answer is that because the game is coming out on PC concurrently with um, the console, the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 5 and Xbox One series, obviously we are writing the um, joypad control in uh, concurrently with um the, the 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 point of click so um yes that's a very good question we we certainly yeah that's a very good question don't yeah. know the answer that's fine that's that's cool it's it's you know the uh, these are things people are just interested in I, hope but, so. I yeah. hope so i hope so <laughs> yes good answer i think um Rose played this wants to know, I like some of the additional Nico content in the director's cut. It just didn't really flow well with the rest. Um, it messed up a little bit with the drama and the pacing. Is that content going to be completely left? The, this is the original. Yeah. So. At the moment, this is the original only. Yeah. So it doesn't have any of the director's cut content. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And, 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 and thank you, because that's a great question. And I think that... You know, Nico, as you know, as the co-protagonist, is really, really important for Broken Sword Two. Of course, we she had her own gameplay, and yeah. and and as as the as the game as the games have gone later, she's basically become you know fifty fifty with George. Um, but yeah, no, as I say, this this is based on the original, so yeah. this is all George gameplay. That makes sense. Um... What, what's been the most sort of challenging aspect of, of, of bringing this all, all back then? Well, partly the the, the sprites, because there mm. were over 30,000 sprites. So yes. huge amounts of animation. I mean, what, what I'd kind of like to do, if you don't mind me going off on a bit of a tangent, oh, is back in, back in the day, um, adventures were very commercially successful. And Sierra Online were yeah. producing King's Quest, Police Quest, um, Ledger Suit Larry. Um, which really hasn't survived the test of time. Nope. <laughs> um, and, um, and, and, and then, um, LucasArts were on their way up and our publisher at the time, Virgin Interactive were super keen that we increased our production value. Um, and part of that was teaming up with, as I mentioned earlier, Owen, Neil, um, Barrington Feelong on the, on, on, on the music. And so we really we, we, we were asked to really come up with something ambitious so there are huge amounts of assets um but particularly on the number of animations and i'm really proud of how those animations have you know been brought across we have mm -hmm. a team i think it's about 15 people um 
really talented people. And, you know, if you can imagine, I mean, what's, what's lovely, and I showed you the game, Laura, yeah. um, last August in, in Cologne at Gamescom. Yeah. And what I, what, what I love, my party trick is to load the game up and everybody goes, oh, yeah, I loved it so much. I go, no, this is what you love. And I press to go to the original. Uh. And people only then realize how low resolution it was. And, you know, so for each of the characters, we've looked at them and the sort of pixels and we've gone back to the original art, the original concept art that was done at the time. And we've drawn, we've redrawn them in high resolution, looking at what the original art was, looking at the sprites, but you have eyes flicking around, you have little expressions, you have, there's just so much that didn't exist in low resolution, mm. but brings character to the game now. And, you know, that was a big challenge. It was a huge, huge undertaking, but we were able to gather together a wonderful team uh, and they've done a brilliant job. And, and I think people are going to get very excited that it feels like the original game, but just much, much more enhanced, you know, much, yeah. much greatly enhanced. Um, do you see yourselves possibly doing this for other games in the series like Broken Sword 2 potentially or I don't know. Well, do you know I mean that, that's a great question and and you know if you'd asked me a week ago yeah. I would have said it depends on yeah. the level of appetite and the success of Kickstarter um, the point is that we've been absolutely overwhelmed with the success um, you know Wendy and I last Wednesday or Thursday you know, we're, 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 you know, I remember, you know, saying, should, should, should we press the button? Yeah, let's press the button and see what happens. We had no idea what the response would be. Um, so, you know, everything is, everything is being rethought now. And just the level of love and positivity is just overwhelming. It's just lovely. Uh, this is a question from Pixie Cow. I have a feeling you, you probably aren't able to give anything concrete again than this, but um, just uh, have you thought about adding additional Kickstarter tiers, such as a cheaper physical tier with just the big box game and digital content? I'll, I'll ask it because it's been asked in. <laughs> but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bless you. Um, I, I, honestly, if 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 I hadn't, you know, if you hadn't told me that Wendy was on the stream, <laughs> then. Look, um, I, I promise you. I promise you. We 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 need we 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 have we need to sit to, sit down and, yeah, and decide all yeah. these things because we just weren't anticipating this level of success. Yeah, yeah. So we've been slightly wrong footed. So apologies to be so vague. No, no, that's fine. And I think it, I I I kind of I understand why people want to to know this, but I thought I'd just throw that in there. But I'm sure you're well aware of of all these things um, that people want to know about. Um, if anyone's got any more questions, by the way, we've, pro we've probably got like a, about four more minutes or something if anyone uh, wants to ask anything else. But thank you, everybody, for chipping in. And um, mm. it, it's good to know. Oh, uh, Winring has a question here. Was there anything that you, you didn't find in, in the archives uh, and you had to recreate again from scratch? I'm sure there probably were elements. You kind of mentioned a little bit of some things there, but yeah, yeah. some of the sound effects. Yeah, some of the sound effects. In fact, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you an example. Um, we don't have the sound effect when when the clown puts the accordion down on the stool. Yes, that is a sound effect that's overlaid the music. When the accord when when the when the clown is in George's face and presses the accordion, that was part of the music we didn't have the sound effect for the accordion and so we commissioned um uh, uh, an art uh, sorry a, a sound designer to come up with it and it arrived and it, it just didn't sound like it and the point is that that is such an iconic moment it has to sound the same right yeah. so yes we we did have to also the pop of the balloon it sounds so simple but if the pop of the balloon is slightly wrong mm. It immediately throws you because, as I keep saying, we want to be completely respectful to the original. So, you know, we went backwards and backwards and backwards and went back to these guys and go, no, this is, it has to be spot on. So, yes, certainly the, the, the audio of, of those DAP tapes, um, five worked and one didn't. And so all the sound effects that existed on that one 
we've had to recreate yes right. from scratch okay that's you see we're getting all the little easter eggs in this now that we're, when when people do finally play this they'll be like aha there's this little thing that's been uh, changed or remodified or anything like that of course we've been talking all about reforged but obviously you've also got a uh, parsable stone coming up at, at some point as well <laughs> Yes, I know. Well, we are quite a small team, so yeah. uh, Parzival Stone is is now going very slowly. Yeah, yeah, um, of course, yeah. And it's just, I mean, it's just very exciting because what we can do is we can, you know, we we are um, building enthusiasm for for for, for the Reforged Broken Sword One, but that sets us in very good stead for, you know, for Parzival Stone and and other Broken Sword games. Um, it's it's a great position to be in yeah totally and and you know i guess uh, th thank you to everyone who, who's popped in to show the support here and and uh ask questions if you have anything else we've got like maybe a, a minute or two so if anyone wants to ask anything um i suppose i'll, I'll ask just you know in general what what has it been like coming back to all this again because it's it's been quite a while since uh, you know, you've maybe had to, to look at this and, you know, on a sort of personal level, what was what was that like for you? Well, I mean, I'm very proud. And, and I, but I also need to emphasize that, you know, I know a lot of people see it as my creation, but there were a lot of very brilliant people involved. Um, the Originally, the art was led by uh, somebody called Steve Odes, who was local to Hull. And I remember when we wrote our first game, Nero the Temptress, um, yes. he was working as a clerk uh, at a place called Kalamazoo. Um, and he sent in his animation and we were just blown away. Um, and then uh, a guy called Adam Tween, um, who was local as well. Um, one of the advantages, I guess, of being in Hull was that there weren't very many other game companies, but there was just as much talent. So we were able to gather together a really brilliant group of people. Um, and then I've already mentioned Owen and, 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 and well, and Tony Warren, who's one of the founders and Dave Sykes was one of the founders. Um, Dave Cummins, who, who, who wrote the dialogue. And actually, um, one of the, one of the painters, um, David Swift, came back and joined us again. Oh, amazing. Or the most, most recently. But, uh, you know, 25 years later, all of those people, you know, aren't available, obviously. Yeah. Um, and what was fantastic was to get together a really good team again. Yeah. Um, both internally and externally. Um, and again, I'm sitting here taking much more credit than I deserve because, you know, and, and what I love about our team now is that there is this absolute passion where we're all shared in what we want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and it's just nice. It's just a pleasure working with lots of talented people. I can, yeah, it's, uh, I'm so excited for all of this. Um, very quick question from Winring, who asks, any plans for uh, developers' commentary uh, similar to other uh, adventure <laughs> games? That is such a nice idea. Mm. That is such a nice idea. I, we enjoyed <laughs> doing it for Beyond the Steel Sky. Oh, yes, of course. Um, and I think it worked well. And for this... There's so much more to talk about because instead of talking immediately, we can, you know, I can go back to memories from 25 years ago. So, yeah, that's a really nice idea. And it is it is something that we are certainly considering. And, and thank you for bringing it Again, up. Again, that's not definite, everybody. It's just something they're thinking about. Don't suddenly think that this is happening. But yes, um, I, I normally ask people what their favourite chocolate bar is at the end of this, Charles. I don't know if you're very... You know, end on a really grueling question, you know. <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I, I like, I'm, I'm going to go for, I mean, it's a very easy question to answer. And it is, of course, the best chocolate bar ever produced okay. by any confectioner. And that is um, Fruit and Nut. Oh, nice. Um, Classic. And if anybody, you'd have to be, Certainly in your fifties, but probably in your sixties. <laughs> but look it up. Look it up. The Frank Muir, everyone's a fruit and nut case. Everyone's a fruit advert. and nut case. How do you know it? <laughs> How do you know it? I know these things. I know these things, Charles. I'm. I will say I'm not fifty or sixty. 
<laughs> no, no, well, that's why that's why I'm asking. How on earth you know? I don't Look actually it up on know. The internet. It's yeah. Frank Muir being absolutely brilliant. That was, <laughs> you know, that was that was that was how they used to make them. Oh, apparently he was the advert in the nineties as well. So there you go. Maybe that's why I know it. So there you go. Ah, uh, maybe that's definitely why. Go back to the definitely go back to the Frank Muir. 70s okay version. i'll check it's, yeah it's maybe i don't know the top. original wendy does say how did you not say your keys <laughs> i know she's absolutely right and you know what i was going to go for your keys because it would be such an on-brand thing to say yeah yeah <laughs> but, but actually the fruit and nuts i yeah. really love excellent well charles thank you so what's so your, much what's your- Laura, what's your favourite? You know what? My favourite, I think I, I actually am a big fan of Terry's Chocolate Orange. I'm a big fan of that. And do you know where they used to be made? Is it York? It is. There you go. I went to university then- in York, so I love York. It's a great place. Big fan of it. Uh, I, oh. I, I, I went past your studios many times, but um, yes. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Okay, okay, say hello if you do it again. Yeah, I love, I love yeah, York. No, it's no, a great no. place. Yeah, so Roundtree's used to, you know, is based and then it got bought. Um, and um, unfortunately, they moved chocolate orange yeah. out of out of the UK and made it somewhere cheaper, which is a great shame. Yeah, that is a shame. Um, but I mean, hopefully, yeah, at some point, I'd, I'd love to come and see you guys up in York um, and, and say hello. But um, until then, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I, I, as we've said, it's good, it's going to be about sort of quarter two at some point uh in this year that we see reforged uh the kickstarter is up now it's still got 25 days to go so if people want to check that out uh please do and i'll put all the links for it uh anything else you want to say charles before we uh no wrap this up? no but just thank you i mean i imagine that the people who are listening in live and who will follow afterwards are, are, are probably fans and you know you're just the best thank you so much to everybody Brilliant. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for doing this and uh, I'll let you get back now. I know it's, it's, uh, it's a busy one. So thank you so much. Goodbye. Great. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>